week and didn't know the <laughs> absolute <laughs> fight that they're in. So, yes, this is my Boston Red Sox hat. Oh, you don't great. know about the the curse of the Bambino. I mean, there was a like a seventy five year rift between the Yankees and the Bo Sox over oh. over over. Oh yeah, there there that's a. You're, you need to be careful which cap you're wearing with which crowd, okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it looks it looks great on you, young sister. It looks great. Glad, glad to it, see it. It does. Yeah. Well, we're gonna uh, <clears throat> we're gonna get started. There will be uh, some more coming in, and <clears throat> actually, uh, Emery's joining us right now. So I'll I'll wait to say hello to him once he looks like he's on. <clears throat> Emery, it's good to have you with us, my friend. Morning. Uh, it's good to be here. I missed you all last week, and Me too. Yeah. I went to services uh, here today, and we just got through, so I talked with a person or two and got out real quick, and uh, good to be back with you. Good to be with you. How you feeling? Uh, feeling uh, drained a little bit. Of course, that comes along with the territory when you're having this radiation but uh after i'm through hopefully that'll get better i've got uh 13 more treatments i believe it is the last one will be may 25th that will be on wednesday well we're all continuing to pray for you and I'm glad you're able to have that treatment and uh uh, Joe, you may have noticed that Emory talks a little different than most of us. Uh, he, he's in South yeah, I Carolina. Talk, I, talk, I talk like Jesus. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. Emory, when you get a chance to hear Joe talk, uh, you'll, you'll catch her <laughs> accent too. She's in London. And so, and, uh, Jeff and Sandy are connecting. So we're getting, uh, We'll have some more with us before long, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started. <clears throat> so uh, this is uh, Mother's Day, and uh, I found out that uh, in Sweden they celebrate Mother's Day later on, but uh, it's Mother's Day today or has already been uh, in Finland, and I know it is for some of you guys too. And uh, I wanted to, to just uh, share something with you uh, here as we get started, see if I can do this um, it's warm in the morning now and so uh, I get to be out on our screened in back porch uh, and this is uh, my little friend uh, that comes to uh, to watch me uh, most every morning actually there are three or four of them but uh, I don't know if they all stand up like this, but I see different ones doing it all the time. And they'll just stand there and watch me for a while. And it reminds me of a story I heard. Now, Anders will probably have to Google these to see what it means. But uh, a Baptist preacher and a Catholic priest and a rabbit went into a bar together. And uh, pretty soon the, the Baptist priest and or the Baptist preacher and the Catholic priest said to the rabbit, well, what are you doing here? And he said, spell check. Huh. <laughs> All that, right. that, by the way, Paul, is for those who have ears to hair. Um, ears to hair. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, got, I got that yoke, Paul. Oh, good, good, <laughs> good. good. Well, I, I, I call my friend Rabbi Spell Check. So every morning <laughs> he comes by and I say, good morning, Rabbi Spell Check. Good to see you. So, <clears throat> all right, enough for my sophomoric humor or junior high or whatever. <clears throat> you must you must buy him a kippa. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we've been uh, for the past <clears throat> several weeks now been looking at at two different kinds of love: um, uh, agape love, the God kind of love, and eros or man's kind of love, and that man's kind of love is based on one person providing what the other person wants, and then if they don't, if they no longer provide that, uh, then the other person will uh, take, uh, take measures to not be around them one way or another, and we use all kinds of human words to describe the God kind of love, but 
obviously, we, we really can't comprehend it, and Scripture says this. God's agape love, of course, has no conditions. It always does what's best for the other person, and it doesn't care who gets the credit. The closest thing that we have as humans to God's kind of love, in my opinion, is a mother's love, a mother's unconditional love that is uh, selfless, always does what's best for the baby and for the children. So uh, in thinking about Mother's Day today, I want to read to you a, a short post from my friend Bill Thrasher, uh, who's a great guy. He has a, an online group called the, <clears throat> the Jesus Purpose Community. He says this, of all celebratory days, Mother's Day should be the one gleaming example of God's reflective, unconditional love for anyone. There's not a person alive who didn't have a mom involved. And God is our birth mother of spirit who brooded over our womb and shrouded infancy, or brooded over our womb in shrouded infancy and nursed us each from her nourishing breast into aware life. It's better to read that than to hear me say it. But uh, he goes on to say, a mighty protector like a grizzly bear she will fearlessly protect her offspring from any threat. Mothers are completely a mirror of God's grace, tenderness, and self-sacrificial giving. Moms universally show us the bounds that love will travel to stay inseparably connected with their children. We often don't have to look far to see God in the eyes and arms of any mom. God is love, and love is what moms do best. That's a great post from Bill, and I will include that uh, in, when I send you guys the uh, copy of the video today, because it comes out better, uh, I think, when you can read it than uh, hear me saying it. So now, talking about a, a mother's love, for, you know, for mothers who are in their right minds, they love like that. But many times there, there can be a breaking point. And we can tend to think, well, God's like that too. You know, yes, he loves us unconditionally, but he, there's, there's got to be a breaking point. Well, <clears throat> there's not. And today on Mother's Day in the United States and <clears throat> Finland and some other places, I, I want to say thank you to uh, all moms for your unconditional love and grace and for doing what's best for us. Uh, and for most of us, again, you are the first revelation of the God kind of love. One of the things that we do uh, with our Grace Restoration team is, is we, uh, we help provide financially for single moms, do it for single dads too, but uh, there are a lot more single moms. So, well, they're not maybe a lot more, but they're more in need. And so, you know, we help single moms and their kids. Uh, and we've, we've got the opportunity. We're going to do that tomorrow. Uh, I found out over the weekend and been talking uh, uh, with uh, um, someone who's connected with a single mom with two uh, school-aged children and uh, struggling financially and uh, wasn't able to keep her telephone bill paid. And so her phone service has been turned off. And so uh, I've got a meeting at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. And thanks to you guys, we're going to be able to turn her uh, phone back on and provide some from extra money for their family. So I appreciate you guys being a part of that. And, and I also want to say, uh, all of you, uh, you guys can nominate or propose or uh, tell me about single moms, whether it's here in the United States or any of the other countries. I mean, because we, you know, we can send money <clears throat> via PayPal uh, uh, overseas. So if you have a, a single mom uh, uh, who's uh, struggling financially and, uh, and needs help, uh, you know, there's a, a good possibility that we can help them. So I uh, appreciate you all being a part of that and uh, uh, feel free to uh, you know, let me not feel free to. I, I really would appreciate if you would let me know if there's somebody that can use some help. All right. Now, we're going to uh, start out with uh, some scripture today, and then we're going to have, and, and feel free to ask questions or interrupt me, uh, but we are, we're we're going to have uh, quite a bit of time at the end to discuss this. The Apostle Paul, in writing two-thirds of the New Testament, <clears throat> made two uh, revelations of God's love 
he uses two revelations of God's love more so than any other writer. There are two phrases that that Paul uses much more so than anybody else that, are, that just uh, um, once you get this revelation, it'll jump out at you. One of them is Paul's much mores, much mores, M-O-R-E-S, and the other is Paul's alls, Paul's much mores and his alls. And this, we're going to look at this phrase today that Paul uses that's translated in at least one translation, exceedingly much more abundantly above all. That, that all comes from one Greek word, exceedingly much more abundantly above all. And we're going to come back to this first, but I'm going to give it to you up front. <clears throat> it's Ephesians 3.20, and I'm going to give you both uh, the uh, mirror and the King James Version. The mirror says, we celebrate Elohim, and Elohim is uh, the Hebrew word for plural, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Paul says, we celebrate Elohim, who supercharges us powerfully from within. Our biggest request or most amazing dream cannot match the extravagant proportion of their thoughts towards us. King James says it this way. God is able to do exceedingly much more abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. And I'm going to encourage you, I'm going to come back to that again, but I'm going to encourage you to uh, really spend some time today, this week, forever, really, uh, meditating on that and, and asking the teacher in you, the Holy Spirit, to uh, show you exactly what that means, that God is able to do exceedingly much more abundantly above all that you ask or think according to the power of God that works in us. Now, that one word there, the Greek word is hooper, H-U-P-E-R. It means somebody does something on behalf of or for the sake of, over and above and beyond, more than, more beyond, so much so that we, we can't even grasp us grasp it. And Paul uses that phrase with grace and with God's love and, and many other things. That's, that's Paul's much more. Sometimes in English, it's just translated much more, but it means exceedingly much more abundantly above all that we can ask or even think. So again, we're going to come back to that. And I'm going to ask you a question when we finish today <clears throat> that maybe you've never been asked before. It's a good question. It's not a test. It's a good question. So <clears throat> wait for that. Now, along with that, along with what we're talking about today, God's love that's more than we can possibly comprehend, uh, my friend Don Keithley, who uh, has a, a great uh, Sunday morning teaching that you can go back to and listen to on a Wednesday night teaching, <clears throat> he's been talking about, he, he was a pastor for <clears throat> some 50 years, uh, and he's talking uh, a lot these days about how we can reach our religious friends who are who are stuck uh, in religiosity uh, and can't uh, get past some things because of the things they've been taught and believed before. And he said that he's found uh, in helping religiously indoctrinated folks see the truth about the only true God he said the best way is just to focus over and over again on God's unconditional love. Because most religious people have heard that God's love is unconditional, but then they've added buts to that, or they've been told there are buts to that. But he's found, and I have too, that when we start really saying God's love is unconditional, now let's look at what it means to be unconditional. That can be a good stepping point to help people see. All right. So first of all, uh, here's from Romans 8, 
31. Now, we've been talking about love. Last week, we talked about love and, and uh, how uh, God is love and how 1 Corinthians 13, uh, all the times you see love there, you can translate it as God, all the things that God is. We know that John wrote in uh, 1 John 4, uh, verse 8 and 16, and in other places too, that God is love. So we're going to look a little bit about love today in Romans 8, 31. So prior to the 31st verse, Paul uh, uh, talks about all these things, and he says, now, so what does all this mean? If God has determined to stand with us, if God is for us, tell me, who then could ever stand or be against us? Verse 32, for God has proved his love, his agape, by giving us his greatest treasure, the gift of his son. And since God freely offered him up as the sacrifice for us all, he certainly won't withhold from us anything else he has to give. Well, each one of these verses is something to really <clears throat> meditate on. Verse 33, who then would dare accuse those whom God has chosen in love to be his? God himself is the judge who has issued his final verdict over them, not guilty. If you must think of God as a judge, at least understand that he has judged us all, not guilty. Romans 8, 34, Paul says, who then is left to condemn us? Certainly not Jesus, the anointed one, for he gave his life for us. And even more than that, he has conquered death and is now risen, exalted, and enthroned by God at his right hand. So how could he possibly condemn us since he's continually praying for our triumph? And that leads back to the very first verse of Romans 8, which says, Paul says, so now the case is closed. There remains no accusing voice of condemnation against those who are joined in life union with Jesus, the anointed one. And that's all of us. Nothing in the universe has the, the power has the power to diminish his love towards us. All right, going on now in, in Romans 8, 35. Paul says, who could ever divorce us from the endless love of God's anointed one? Absolutely no one. Nothing in the universe, nothing in the universe has the power to diminish his love toward us. Troubles, pressures, and problems are unable to come between us and heaven's love. What about persecutions and deprivations and dangers and death threats? No, they are all impotent to hinder omnipotent love. Paul goes on to say, God has made us to be more than conquerors, and his demonstrated love is our glorious victory over everything. Verse 38, Paul says, so now I live with the confidence that there is nothing in the universe with the power to separate us from God's love. He said, I'm convinced that his love will triumph over death, life's troubles, fallen angels, or dark rulers in the heavens. There is nothing in our present or future circumstances that can weaken his love. There's no power above us or beneath us no power that could ever be found in the universe that can distance us from God's passionate love, which is lavished upon us through our Lord Jesus, the anointed one. Now, that's just an unbelievable passage. And, and I'm confident, as I'm learning more about this, that this message is the Apostle Paul's masterful attempt to eliminate all the but what about questions in regards to God's love to us? I mean, he, in what I just read to you, he covered anything that somebody could address saying, well, yeah, but what about, I mean, when you, when you see that God, that nothing that's ever been created in the universe can separate us from God's love, then for example, you can go, well, what about God won't, uh, violate our free will? What about the fact that we can choose not to accept it? Well, scripture tells us nothing 
that's ever been created in the universe can separate us from God's love. I mean, nothing that's ever been created in the universe is pretty all-inclusive, at least in my understanding. <clears throat> all right, now, all of that is to set us up for the main course here. <clears throat> Ephesians 3.19. And I just, I got three verses here, and then <clears throat> we're going to discuss. Paul says, I did, and he's talking to you and to me here. He says, I desire for you to become intimately acquainted with the love of Christ on the deepest possible level, far beyond the reach of a mere academic intellectual grasp. Within the scope of this equation, God's, God finds the ultimate expression of himself in you so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God, awakened to the consciousness of his closeness. Separation is an illusion. Oneness is God's idea all along. I'm reading to you here from the mirror. God desires to express himself through your touch. And boy, that's true with a mother's touch with her, with her kids and a, and a father's too. God desires to express himself through your touch, your voice, your presence. He's so happy to dwell in you. There is no place in the universe where he would rather be. God's love is so wide. It encompasses everyone to the ends of the earth. Verse 20, we celebrate Elohim. God's plural, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who supercharges us powerfully from within. Now, here's what we're going to really focus on here. Our biggest request or most amazing dream cannot match the extravagant proportion of their thoughts, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, towards us. King James says, now to him, God who is able to do exceedingly much more abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. And again, that's that Greek word, hooper. It, it means so much more than we can possibly uh, comprehend. Now, here, here's what I, I really hope you'll, you'll memorize. It's on your handout. I'm, I hope you'll memorize it, meditate on it, ask the teacher in you to help you with this. He goes on to say, never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. <clears throat> he will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, <clears throat> your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all. For his miraculous power constantly energizes you. That's from the passion. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dreams, and exceed your wildest imaginations. He will outdo them all for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. Now, Jesus demonstrated outdoing all of those with his grace miracles, much more wine than people could drink at the wedding, much more food than tens of thousands of people could eat when he fed them on the hillside, much more fish than the fishermen's nets could hold, saving and including infinitely more, like all people, than religion could ever imagine. So here's my question for you now, and it's for myself too. What is your greatest request? What is your most unbelievable dream? What is your wildest imagination? Scripture says he will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and your wildest imagination. As a matter of fact, he will outdo them all for his miraculous power constantly energizing you. Now, much more than we can ask or imagine. 
asking meant in the Greek there something a little different than what we have uh, translated mean what we thought it means from translators. Asking doesn't mean to uh, beg uh, a distant sky god somewhere to somehow uh, because we've done enough good works or prayed hard enough or long enough or fasted enough or given enough or got enough people together to pray to beg that God will give us something. No, it, we're learning more and more. It means to, uh, as we're one with God, to think about and visualize what God has already given us and then see that manifest. We're on the third chapter of, of Ephesians here. And when we started out in chapter one, Paul made it very clear because of his great love for us, before he created anything or anyone, God chose us and lavished all the spiritual blessings in the heavenly realms on you and me and all of us. He's already given us everything for life and God in this, Peter says. So we don't, we don't need to ask God for something like patience or joy or whatever. We need to see and visualize what we already have. You guys know that, that I use the, the word D-E-E-M, delightfully expect effortless manifestation of the desires of our heart. So we, we, we dream in our heart the uh, one of the definitions for the mind of Christ is our imagination, where we co-create with the Trinity. So when God says he will take whatever we ask or dream or imagine and blow the socks off of that much more than we could ever possibly dream or imagine. <clears throat> Final verse, Ephesians 3.21. Paul says, God is both the author and conclusion of the glory on display in the called out ones, those of us who've been called out from religion, mirrored in Christ Jesus. The encore continues throughout every generation, not only in this age, but also in the countless ages to come. All right, so I appreciate you guys listening. We've got about 40 minutes now where I'm going to listen to you. But I, I really, uh, I want to get your thoughts and your comments on, on what God's been saying to you this morning as we've heard this. But I, ju I just, I really want to, boy, I'm speaking to myself here and to all of us. God wants us to think and dream and imagine with no limits. And as we partner with him to co-create, to bring into existence all the possibilities of the things that there are in the universe, he brings them about. Okay. What are your thoughts? And oh, for those of you who are new, uh, if you can use the emoji uh, on your uh, on your Zoom thing to raise your hand like this. Uh, if if you're uh, if you're unable to do that, raise your hand when you want to speak, and, and then keep your hand up uh, so that we can see it. And uh, Jody watches for those, and she'll show me. Uh, she'll write down who's next. So. Now it's your time. Dana. Well, I wanted to, oh, I'm muted. No, you, no you're no, you okay. Oh, I'm okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I wanted to um, say that I know God is so good and, and all these verses are just marvelous. And uh, I wanted to share a couple things that were kind of, I'd given up on in my imagination. But um, I know I know that with God, all things are possible. So I have a nephew who um, was in prison, and he was also uh, had a lot of personal issues, problems. And I was with him when he was a little baby boy, and I was a teenager. And I just loved him, and I saw his life was really difficult. And... Uh, he just had negative uh, programming his whole growing up. And so he has connected with me on Facebook and Messenger. And um, so I, you know, tried to encourage him and, 
tell him how much I love him, all that, and how much God loves him. And he has, uh, you know, been connected with God's stuff in prison and so forth. But what was so cool was um, I was able to share with him this manifestation idea, imagining himself and how I'm seeing him as being able to go forward with paying his rent and being able to, you know, have his job and keep it and so forth. Well, he didn't message me back he just did today and um i hadn't heard from him in a, two or three months and he was so excited he said happy mother's day aunt dana and then he said that he had um gotten his apartment squared away his money and finances were good and his job was going well and i was just so <laughs> thrilled because i thought maybe i turned him off with too much uh God talk or however I put it across it didn't sound right to him but it did and thank you Jesus and then um, my granddaughter who I started going to a church that I thought was non-legalistic well it's very it is legalistic after I got into a bible study I found out they're just southern baptists but anyway um what what happened was I said I just can't go there you know and she wanted to connect with the church so and I've invited her to come to this group but it just never works out so but God has given her a Herbalife gal and that's what we went to yesterday in Tonganoxy was her event which is called Grace for All and basically she's in a little bit legalistic church but it doesn't matter she doesn't preach it she basically has helped my granddaughter so much because she focuses really because of herbal life is a, a healthy program with your eating well she focuses on self-love and everybody needs to love themselves and that god loves them unconditionally so she doesn't get caught up because she's a business she doesn't emphasize hell or any of that part of it but it has helped my granddaughter so much so we didn't have to go to church <laughs> you know god has given her this lovely woman who um has just just bears her soul and her love for people and leaves out the legalistic stuff and so it's, god is so good he he loves everybody so much and it's really helped me to do the same. My three goals in that little group is love myself, love others, and forgive all, everybody and all. <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to share all that. Good news, good news. God is good all the time. And he's unconditionally loves us. <laughs> oh, thank you, Nana, so much for sharing that and sharing it so well. And I would say you did go to church yesterday. Uh, <clears throat> they, yeah. they just called it an herbal life group. But, that's uh, right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's that's wonderful. Gosh. And, you know, uh, as we've been learning not only ourselves visualizing how we want things to change, but we can do that for other people too. And, you know, we're, we know now that scripture told us this 2000 years ago, <clears throat> but uh, we know now from quantum science, quantum uh, spirituality, that we're all connected and uh, quantum entanglement. And we can, we can pray as someone else, uh, you know, not just praying for God to do something for them, but we can visualize things as someone else. And some of us who have been doing that have seen the manifestations come. And I tell you what, it, <laughs> it's, uh, it just blows your mind. God is more than able to do much more than we could ever imagine. All right, Dana, you got, got us off to a great start. So who's next? Emery? Uh, I guess physically, you know, I would uh, <clears throat> pray, uh, like to see my health improve. Spiritually, uh, John 17, 3 comes to mind where it says, uh, this is eternal life, that you know the one true God and his son who he sent. So I think for me, 
uh, it's all about a loving relationship with God. I still see a lot of darkness in me that needs to be burned out. And I would just like to continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to come to a better understanding of how much he uh, loves and cares for me. And, and in return, I will lovingly respond to it. Well, I see that happening for you, Emery, and I, I, uh, uh, I see it in your life, and I, I would encourage you to um, just visualizing that being true, because it is true. Uh, he's already given you uh, all of those yeah, things. It's true, but I want it to be better. <laughs> I, I, I can relate. I, I know what you mean. We, we want to, we want it to happen. We want it to manifest uh, so that we can see it and experience it right now. Exactly. And, and, and we, we can do that in our imagination. And uh, I, I found that uh, when I'm doing that, my, my mind, uh, my spirit can't tell the difference between it actually physically happening or what I'm experiencing in my mind for that, that period of time when we do that. Uh, it's really good. Bill, you're next, and then Jeff. Well, as I was reading the stuff that you sent out this week, and it was about so much more, uh, you know I've had quite a few kids and grandkids, and I remembered that four years or four or five years ago, I sent to all my kids a poem that I had written about so much more. And so I... Uh, and I might have put this out since then because I've had some friends that uh, we got in discussions about it and they ended up being on so much more. So it, it's a little long, but not too off long. So if you don't care, I'll, I'll read it to you. It's Please called do. So Much More. And I'm sharing my spiritual journey at that time of 76 years. That's when I put it out. And it's really very simple, as am I. God's love is amazing. And for if while we were in our enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life, uh, which is what you read, Romans 5.10. So what I wrote was five was so much more. When I was young and growing up, this thought was in my head. Hell would be an awful place to go after I was dead. Religion was about missing this place, a place I didn't want to go. Fear and anguish and eternal pain would be all that I would know. I wonder, where is this loving God that will never leave nor forsake, that died a sinner's death and came for me to take my place? As soon as I realized this God of wrath that I thought I knew would not be pleased by my works, no matter what I would do, I cried out in deep despair, hoping maybe he would hear. After all, he was way up in heaven and I was way down here. How could I ever please him if righteousness is his demand? How could I ever measure up for I'm just a fallen man? He himself said none was good. No, not even one. For if he wanted righteousness, he would have to send his son. And when and if he comes, he will have to be my life. For I have tried all I know to overcome this sin and strife. It's taken me many years for me to finally see that my biggest enemy to my surprise, was always me. Only if I died with Christ could I really be free. Only then could I cease my works and finally just be me. Now that I have died with Christ, like him, I too was raised, and now Christ lives in me, much to the Father's praise. Though I died, yet I live, for it's Christ that lives in me. He now is everything that I had tried to be. I heard the spirit softly calling, come, my love, you can explore. I will be your light as you enter through the door.
as the only begotten son of God, Jesus became that door. I have always been in him, but oh, there's so much more. In God's very presence with his family, I am one. This God of love has sought me out. The battle, it has been won. Then I asked the living Christ, what do I have in store? He said, all you've ever dreamed, and then, oh, so much more. When sin abounded everywhere and death crouched at my door, when fear seemed to reign supreme, grace abounded so much more. When I saw God's love for me, when I was weak and weary and poor, when I was an ungodly sinner, he not only died, but oh, so much more. He took my shame, my heartaches, and all my sins he bore. And in his resurrection, he gave me so much more. He gave me peace that passes understanding, a joy that floods my heart, a love he gave. The love he gave was himself, and he has made me a part. Apart from Christ, I am nothing. But in him, creation is mine. Not waiting for eternity, I have this life in time. For truly, I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus, who is Lord of all. Love is the answer to all my questions. To walk in love is my call. To see everyone through God's love. That's how simple it can be. I'm so glad that through his love is how he first saw me. Oh, Bill, that's uh, that's just beautiful. And if, if you'll send me that, I'll uh, I'll send it out to everybody. And wow, that's that's really beautiful. I I'm gonna let you all in on a little secret. Um, I could just read one of Bill's poems to the be to begin with, and not give you all the stuff I prepared at all. And, uh, and we'd be uh, just as much, if not uh, uh, more blessed. Uh, gosh, thank you, Bill. All right, Jeff, you're up. Okay, well, I really appreciated Bill's uh, contribution here this morning as well. And, and I'm glad to follow on from that, though I certainly uh, don't have something as lengthy or as, as uh, ministering, but uh, from uh, Dana's comments uh, about her, uh, was it your son or your friend? I, uh, or grandson, sorry. Nephew. Uh, nephew. Uh, you know, I was, I was struck by what Paul said after you finished, because that was kind of resonating with me in that this, there are, there are things happening on a level that we don't perceive, but we know by faith. And some know by science. But I, what I heard was that uh, he who has ears, let him hear. You know, it's a, a saying of Jesus uh, several times through the Gospels. And it, it, I was struck by the fact that God hears everything. And he hears by the spirit. And, and sometimes our, our spirit is the spirit he's hearing by, such as what your nephew had uh, spoken to you, what, and then, and then uh, what Emery shared about uh, his desire. And, and it, it resonates with me that God hears sometimes through us, but he answers again, sometimes through us by prayer, but, but he hears from through everyone's spirit what's going on in anyone's life. And we can know, like we can, uh, like we can either know scientifically about the quantum physics of how things are affected, or by faith, how the God is going to move in someone's life. We can know this because he prays through us. He, and or he prays through someone else. And we can trust that God hears the famous cry, you know, as the saying or song lyric goes. He hears the famous cry and he will answer. He'll answer through, if not our prayers, through other people's prayers. And it's such a, it's such a joy to be in that stream of 
God, the flow of his spirit, as we hear the problems of others, you know, wanting something immediately, yes, but knowing by faith we can have the thing we desire or they desire in, the, in terms of something changing in their life or moving by the power of God. Yeah, that's great, Jeff. That's great. I, you know, I've been, uh, I, I won't, uh, I won't uh, break any confidences, but I've, uh, different ones of us have been praying for a couple of different situations uh, in this group. And, we, and we've been uh, visualizing and delightfully expecting effortless manifestation. Uh, and we've seen those come about this week and just amazing ways and, and some things that uh, uh, <clears throat> without spiritual eyes to see our, our human eyes could never see happening. Uh, but lo and behold, uh, <laughs> and th th those are both, those are both Jesus words, you know, lo, behold, <laughs> uh, lo, lo and behold, uh, they have miraculously uh, come into being and, oh man, it's just, uh, it's so good. All right. Who's next? Robert. Okay. Yeah. This was on my mind when we came online here tonight. And I mean, I think it fits perfectly with the whole discussion. And I think when I look at my uh, monitor here, that I think with this crowd, you're going to have a couple of things that will help me out. I am sure. <laughs> but, um, you know, we have a, I, I have a little problem with some, some people in our congregation because I believe that um, Jesus has taken, has uh, done away with, certainly with the power of sin, right? That's what it tells us. I don't know how that is in the Greek. And I am sure some of you have some uh, thoughts that can help me pretty well on that, that I have friends there that uh, I've taught in the past and in the background and um, uh, it baptized them at some point. And, um, but now when I, I say things like, well, the power of sin has been, been uh, crushed. Death, uh, where is I sting and all these thoughts there. Corinthians and all this beautiful text. It's just incredible. But they will tell you, oh, but you're still a sinner. Okay, yes. I, I think that I would have to say yes. And then they would, uh, it doesn't mean anything even. They're kind of, I think Baxter Kruger put it one time, that we're trying, we're trying to resurrect something that Jesus did in the incarnation. I, is that right? Trying to resurrect the power of sin when it's now dead. Is that a right assumption or have I missed? I would agree with that. Okay. Yeah, I, I would too. And let, let me, uh, let me give you some uh, thoughts on that. <clears throat> it goes, it really goes back to what does the word sin mean? And uh, we've learned that it, it means falling short of, or missing the mark of something. And uh, when it was first used, when it was originally used in the, in the biblical settings, it was, falling short or missing the mark of knowing who God is 
God is love. God is grace. God is pure light with no trace of darkness. God loves and accepts and includes everyone. It's falling short of knowing who we are and who everybody else is. It's, it's an identity thing. It's God's identity, ours, our identity, and everybody else's identity. Now, when we fall short of that, when we no longer remember or we forget or who we are, then we will act out of that and we will hurt other people, we'll lie, cheat, steal, slander, those kinds of things. Those actions are not sin, although that's what religion and the world call sin. Those actions are the results of us falling short of knowing who God is. So I, I no longer say I'm a sinner. Yes, I know that I, I can lose my temper or be insensitive or whatever. Whenever I do, it's simply because I'm not consciously being aware of Christ in me and Christ living as me. Uh, so, you know, when, when somebody says we're all sinners, I, my understanding is, no, we're not. Uh, we, we know, those of us in this group, we, we know who we are. We know who God is. We know who everybody else is. We may forget that from time to time and act out of that, um, but it doesn't change uh, who we are, and Jesus came and took all of that away. God chooses not to remember it anymore, not to keep any list of it, not to hold it against us. Uh, I mean, it, it, that, that's what the finished work at the cross is. It, it's done, so uh, that, that's, that may be more than, uh, well, it certainly is more than uh, people who are still ensconced in religion can grasp at one time. <clears throat> but I, I think it, it goes back to God's unconditional love. Uh, whatever you, if, whether you think you're a sinner or not, or whatever you call yourself, if God's love is unconditional, uh, okay, so you're a sinner. God's love is still unconditional. I don't think we are sinners, but I don't know if that makes any sense. So, uh, or not. I feel like I'm kind of diesling there. Good. Thank you, man. Sure. Anybody else have thoughts on that or anything else you, you want to talk about? I can tell you that there's religious groups that really don't desire for there to be unconditional love. I'm pretty convinced of that. I've been around 71 years. And I, I'm pretty well convinced that people will say that there's just not, we don't have a father like that. And I've heard many people preaching say, yeah, it's the, here's the classic, you know, is to say, yeah, he loves and he is love, but he's also, uh, it's justice, I guess it's a word. You know, always remember that. And it's got the big butt right there in front of it, but he's still justice. And they've got to have that justice thing in there that comes from many of our backgrounds, I tell you. I'm sure it's, it's really incredible. Did mine. But well, yeah, and again, I, in the and, evangelical, sure, thinking. that's that's why that's why words are so important, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. The word that we translate justice means making all things right for everyone. That's what the word meant when it was written in Scripture making all things right for everyone. Justice, uh, and especially the way we use justice in today's uh, language, uh, it just perverts that. And in the scripture that I read for you earlier today that's in your handout, uh, God is the judge, and he has judged everyone not guilty. <laughs> he has made everything right for hey. everyone. Jeff, go ahead. Well, I wanted to point out the black heart 
<laughs> yeah, you might think of it as a black hole of, of the love of God. And that's where, that's where your sin went. And of course, the Bible says Jesus died unto sin once. And you can finish that scripture, Paul. That's our hope. Yeah. Well, I tasted death once and for all. Yeah. It, it took it away. There, there are. Yeah. It, uh, <laughs> I mean, he just did that. The finished work at the cross means so much. There's so many levels of it, but that is one huge part of it. Uh, I mean, it, it, <laughs> it's a done deal. Sin is not an issue with between God and us. It has passed the event horizon. Yeah. And it is no more. And yeah. what, what, what is in there to go get it means to cross that event horizon, which means is to experience forgiveness of sin, the love of God, and there's no coming yeah. back. That's right. And it, it literally, uh, in God's economy, it is a no thing. It's, it's nothing. And the, the, only, the only power that sin has is whatever power we mentally give it. And we don't have to give it any power at all. Jesus has defeated it. It is a no thing. It literally only exists in our minds, whereas Paul wrote in Colossians 1, uh, we thought we were enemies with God in our minds, yeah. but we never were. We aren't now, and we never will be. Robert, do you have something? No. Okay. All right, we got just a few more minutes. Andres left here. has his hand up, and Stan and Ani have both written in the chat. Oh, so sorry. Okay. Uh, Ani wrote, sin exists between us humans. Yes, it does. I mean, we, we, <laughs> it, it does. All right. Now, Anders, you're up. Yes, I, I can relate to us, uh, what uh, Emery said before. Uh, I, I wish to go on Thursday, I will meet with my doctor and I wish she could uh, say to me, Anders, there is nothing wrong with you. You are healed. That would be wonderful. And also, I, can, I think I can understand what Emery is saying about, we, we all know that we are loved by God. We all know we have his gift and it's him that is, it's he that is the greatest gift for us. Not what he gives us, but he's himself is our greatest gift. But I think for me, I would like to, like, I would like that to be a reality for me. That I, I that I, I could walk in that all the time and, and know it for sure. Uh, grow in it, whatever you like to say. But uh, that's how I see it. But uh, there is also something uh, I long for, and that is to get more contacts here in Scandinavia with other people uh, who share my faith. And I can already see that come to pass uh, because we have a, in Sweden, we have a, a Christian uh, paper called Dagen, it's the day. Uh, and uh, there has been several articles there uh, in the last weeks about uh, uh, about this thing with hell and uh, eternal punishment and uh, Christians who, who don't agree with that anymore. And I'm so uh, thankful for that. And I have come in contact with some of them and uh, uh, have them as friends on Facebook. And uh, I, I look forward to communicate with them and perhaps start a Swedish group where we can share this faith together. Oh, that would be so wonderful. And I, I, I bet you will. I, uh, a couple of things here. Uh, Stan uh, posted the strength of sin is the law. Boy, that's a whole thing we could talk for a long time on. The strength of sin is the law. We're not under the law. 
and we are empowered by grace. Of course, that's true. And <clears throat> thank you, Stan. And and I want to I want to just uh, elaborate just a little bit on what uh, Anders said and and what Emery said. Uh, I think the what we're and we all experience this, but I, I, what helps me uh, uh, with it is realizing two different words: objective and subjective objectively in what Paul would call the invisible realm in uh, 1 Corinthians 4.18 or 2 Corinthians 4.18, the invisible realm, what, what Jesus calls the, the kingdom realm or the kingdom of God. Objectively, these things are true. We are whole, we're healed. Uh, the, uh, there's, there's nothing wrong with us. We have no sin. Sin is not an issue. We are one with God. Objectively, that is true. Now, where we live and what, what Paul and John and Jesus are, are all about trying to do and what I'm trying to do uh, in helping you guys and myself too is to see and experience that sub, subjectively. Subjectively. It is true. In the physical realm, it doesn't yet seem true. It might seem we might get a uh, an X-ray that uh, you know has shows something wrong or 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 whatever, or our bank account might be have a negative balance or whatever. But objectively, those are not true in the kingdom realm. And uh, it's not that we pretend that something doesn't exist and stick our head in the sand and we're oblivious to it. Um, but that that's where the the envisioning and the imagination and the trust uh, all comes in. It's seeing subjectively what is already true objectively. And I, you know, I've I, honors I've joined with you and I, I made a note of that. I'm going to I'm going to visualize and see subjectively what's true objectively. There, your doctor's saying there's nothing wrong with you. Uh, you are healthy. And, and same thing. Um, Emory, with, with the things that you're talking about. Um, you know, the, these are, uh, I guess one word to describe all this is, is mystical. <laughs> uh, it's, it's mystical. We, we, we try to explain it with words, but we can't necessarily. Uh, <clears throat> but um, yeah. All right. Anybody else who, who uh, would like to say something in the last few minutes, especially those of you who haven't had a chance to talk today, uh, uh, raise your hand digitally or otherwise, and we'll, we'll call on you and want to hear from you. Anders has his hand up. Oh, yeah. Anders, uh, sorry. Yeah. yeah, I forgot to add something. I have had a Christian friend from the evangelical world here in Sweden who, who's been questioning my faith. And... Uh, he wrote to me on Messenger, and I told him, <clears throat> I, cannot, I cannot write to every single person who questions my faith. So perhaps we will meet instead. So we met yesterday on a cafe here in Sweden, and ah. in, in Växjö, and we, we were sat down for one and a half hour. And we had a very, very good talk. Good. He, was lis he was listening, he was not aggressive. He, 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 he came with his arguments and I, I could answer him uh, uh, without being aggressive or, or uh, pushing. And, and uh, uh, in the end, when we walked from, the, from this cafe, he, he asked me to pray for him. And in the evening, I sent him uh, um, the shack, the, 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 the movie. Uh, I haven't heard from him since then, so I don't, I don't know if he has seen it, but he was interested. So I think that was something wonderful to share with you. Yeah, no kidding. Good job. Yeah, Kitsy. Anders, I would just encourage you to share this Zoom link with these people. and this, uh, it, Invite and, them to join us on this group. I don't know the language. 
probably some of them he has some of his friends don't know english probably well that's it that's <laughs> yeah but, I, I would i would send them to you emory to to learn <laughs> 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 Yeah. That's a good point, though. Yeah, right? I can teach them to learn English real slow, can I, Andrew? <laughs> I, I think I think the, the the only one who can speak English the right way here is Joe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I didn't I didn't hear what you say, Kitsi, but I understand you want you want me to want me to send them the link to this group. Yes, yeah. yes. encourage them uh, to join us if they do speak English. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think most most of the Swedish people do in awesome. our, our generation and the younger. So I, yeah. I will do that in due time. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Any, anybody else? Who else <clears throat> has something you want to share as we wrap things up? <clears throat> Joe? Well, thank you so much for letting me join. I, I think what I found so powerful about the translation that you used was how it kept emphasizing that nothing in the universe has the power to separate us from God's love. Because if I had one wish that Paul had written in that list of things that doesn't separate us from the love of God, I wish he'd put in yourself. So not even you can separate yourself from God. That would be that would be the pinnacle. But it was when I heard Paul Young say on the verse, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing. And he said, well, that includes you because you're a created thing. So I thought, yes, I've got, I've got it. And so as I read through your notes, seeing that constant emphasis on nothing, nothing in the universe was just really wonderful. So thank you so much. That's good. Uh, yeah, you're, you are most, most welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Stacy. do I need to call on you or are you ready to close us? Oh, Paul, Paul, Paul. <clears throat> so, you know, reading this passage here, uh, it talked about how God is more powerful than we can understand, how God loves us more than we can understand. And he has things better, things in store for us that are better than we can understand, you know. And uh, one of the big happenings, you mentioned it at the start of this uh, broadcast, is, is one of the big happenings around our house this week is I got a new job, right? So toward the end of last year, I started getting this feeling that maybe it's time to move on, do something different than my day to day. Not necessarily leave the company, but do something different during my day to day, right? So, uh, as luck have it, my supervisor was promoted. I was everybody thought I was going to be the next in line to do this job. I just prayed for God's will to be done. I didn't get the job. They didn't offer me the job. That's fine. I'm fine with that, and I felt fine about it because I prayed God's will to be done. On March 11th, I had to fire a guy. Uh, I don't think it was the right thing to do. My heart was not in it. Uh, it you know, he made a mistake, but it, we, we shouldn't have fired him. We threw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak. Uh, and I was trying to help him find another position. So I was out looking for jobs. That's the only reason I was out looking for jobs was to help my friend that I had to terminate from the company, find another position. And I saw this one job pop up in Kansas City. I said, oh, man, that looks like a really sweet gig, but it's way, way out of my league. So I just kept moving on, you know, looking for something for, for my friend. Uh, later that night, another one of my ex-employees sent me a, a, a link, said, hey, I saw this job, made me think of you. And I said, well, I, I saw that company. I, they caught my eye with the next one up. So I went back out to, you know, I thought that's a sign. I've got to, you know, at least give them my resume. Um, and, and I went back out and looked at this job and it wasn't Kansas City. It was Oklahoma City. Well, okay, I, you know, it's, I feel inclined to put in for it anyway. So I submitted my resume. They read it in about 15 minutes. You know, when I did, I prayed for God's will to be done with this in this situation. I didn't pray for this job. I prayed for God's will to be done with this situation. 
They read my resume in about 15 minutes. The next day, I was talking to HR with that company. Before the interview, I prayed for God's will to be done with this thing and to remove any fears that I had around it, right? By the end of the week, I'm interviewing with the vice president of this company. And again, before the interview, I prayed for, you know, God's will to be done and remove any fear I had around it. And then uh, I guess it was next week, they flew me to Atlanta to interview with the president and the board of executives. Before I went in there, I prayed, you know, for God's will to be done, remove fears I had around it, let me be receptive of his will, you know, and, and give me everything I need to follow his will. And about two weeks went by and I thought, okay, what, they found somebody perfect for the job. It wasn't me, you know, thanks for the blessing of, of getting to go through this. And then they offered me the job. And uh, when they did the offer, I had a number wrote down slash three weeks because um, they only start people out at one week vacation. And I'm walking away from 34 years seniority in the gig I've got now or that I had. And uh, I was getting like five weeks and I thought, well, three weeks is, is, Maybe I can ask for that and see what happens. So they offered me three weeks and they exceeded the number for salary that I had wrote down, you know, and uh, that, that was awesome. Then they sent my benefit package. Come to find out first year, I get three weeks vacation. Second year, I get four. Third year, I'm back up to five. So it's even better than I expected, you know, and, uh, you know, that, that, that's just job stuff, but this is a good example of it. And, and I didn't ask for what I wanted to be done. I didn't visualize it. You know, I love you guys. And I know that you guys only want the best for me, but I didn't even tell you about any of this because I didn't want you praying for it. And I didn't want you visualizing it because I only wanted what God's will to be done with it, you know? And so now I've got the job that's way out of my league when I first saw it, but man, I feel empowered to be successful in this job. And I have to understand that, you know, my definition of success may not be the same thing God's definition of success is going to be in it. He just mean to, he may intend for me to go to Marietta, Georgia the week after next and meet somebody. And if that's it, you know, it's, it's going to be successful. It's, it's, it's a done deal. And I feel really good about it. But uh, given that God is more powerful than I can understand, God loves me more than I can understand, and he has better things in life for me than I can understand, why would I limit what I'm asking for with what I can visualize because he's got something better than that for me. You know, and this job thing is just a tiny little, tiny little fraction. That's just the, the, the headline of the news this week. But um, man, I'm grateful for it. And I'm grateful for this uh, opportunity. I'm grateful for that relationship with God where I can trust him. I know, I know those things to be fact. He's more powerful, better, more good, <laughs> and has things in store for me that I can't comprehend so i'm not going to limit his blessings into that tiny little thing that i can comprehend up here between these uh, big floppy ears you know uh, so when you can really man when, when you can believe those three things and and have that sort of faith and be okay and with whatever he's got in store like i said it may just he may have want me to meet someone but that's going to be success and i just i'm blessed and i'm grateful and uh I'm, I'm so grateful for god sharing that kind of relationship with me and uh i guess that's all i've got but yay god <laughs> <laughs> well all you got is man it's really powerful guys thank you thank you so much for sharing that and uh yeah you know i can i think we can all be uh we can all limit uh, god and we uh uh, yeah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that either. Hey, we're, we're way over time now. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to bring us to a close and thank you guys so much, uh, for, uh, being here. Thank you for the comments that, uh, uh, some of you, uh, posted that, uh, didn't say out loud and that that's a good way to do it. Thank I'm glad that, uh, Christian, you could be with us today and Ani, glad Joe that you could be here and everybody else who's been here before we, we have several people who are um, gone who aren't uh, today for mother's day or uh, who aren't in a place where they have um, uh, internet uh, connections to 
participate with us. So uh, for the most part, that's where people are who you know, we normally would see on here. But uh, uh, guys, another wonderful time together. I love all of you guys. I'll send you uh, uh, Bill's uh, poem. And uh, that thing that I, I read earlier when I send out the, uh, the copy of this and just love all of you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, Paul. You're back. Yeah. I just want to add that my friend who I was trying to help find a job now has another job and is making more than I was able to pay him in the previous job. So worked out there too. Would that be something like uh, God working all things for the good? <laughs> just like that yeah 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 oh, wonderful great well love all of you guys see you all next time love Hello. you love you back thank you thank you have a good week god